This is how the gemstones in Revelation 21 and the jewels in Moses' time in Exodus 28 prove that God exists and that God is indeed the one who wrote the Bible. This modern day discovery proves that the Bible was written by God and not man. This revelation will shock you. Science has only just now caught up with what was written in the scriptures 2000 years ago. These jewels prove the existence of God. Watch this. The new Jerusalem as laid out in Revelation 21 will be made up of 12 precious stones that we would make into jewelry today. Now here's the fascinating thing, which to me is the final proof that that Bible is the word of God, that it must be God inspired. In the last generation only, we've discovered how to make purer light than we had before. Most light is bouncing around, light waves crashing into each other, going in all different directions. For example, the light coming from a spotlight still lights the opposite side of my face by reflecting off walls and surfaces. Light comes at us from all directions, but we've now discovered how to send light in one direction. Laser light is the most common way to do this. We've all seen laser light beams straight as an arrow. But we've also got what we call cross-polarized light. A polarized filter allows light through in that same way, but if you put another polarized filter at a right angle to that, now you've got an extremely fine filter. In the same way, if you take sunglasses and take one lens and put it at right angles to the other, it goes even darker. It only lets very straight light through. Now people have taken jewels and precious stones and cut a very thin slice for microscopic purposes and then shone cross polarized light through them to see what happens. What happens to these precious stones in pure light? One of two entirely different things happens with every jewel. Either the jewel is an isotropic jewel or an anisotropic jewel. Now what happens is this. Some jewels in pure light, whatever their color, they may be red, blue, or green. These jewels turn into all the colors of the rainbow and the most fantastic patterns. Other precious stones in pure light lose all their color and just go black and look like a lump of coal dust. And it's only in this modern generation that people have discovered this unusual property. For example, diamonds in pure light are nothing. Did you hear that? Diamonds are nothing. In pure light, diamonds just display a lump of coal dust. Rubies and garnets are like diamonds. They just lose everything. These jewels are isotropic, but there are other stones that are anisotropic and they display these intense, beautiful colors. Now, here's the fascinating thing that blew my mind and I've never recovered. The 12 precious stones that God uses to build the New Jerusalem are all anisotropic. In pure light, they are all exceedingly more beautiful. And God is light. So imagine God's light shining through these anisotropic jewels. God doesn't touch the diamonds or the rubies or the garnets. He doesn't build the New Jerusalem with them. But God does build with these anisotropic jewels, which I am about to reveal to you. Take a look at the picture on the screen of these stones. Look at the top 12 stones on this picture, and you'll see the stones of the New Jerusalem. Look at the four bottom ones at the bottom of the picture, and you'll see they're black, no attraction whatsoever. Now then, who knew this 2,000 years ago? No scientist knew it, no philosopher knew it, nobody knew it. John the Apostle writing down the book of Revelation as the Lord dictated it to him, he didn't know. Nobody knew except one person in the entire universe, the one who created all things, God himself. Where is this passage about the jewels written exactly? Revelation 21. Halfway through the chapter, you'll find all the 12 stones listed there. Starting in verse 19, you can read them. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Chalcedony, the fourth Emerald, the fifth Sardonyx, the sixth Carnelian, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, 
the ninth Topaz, the tenth Chrysoprase, the eleventh Jacinth, and the twelfth Amethyst. No diamonds, no rubies, no garnets, because they're isotropic. Now, isn't that amazing? If it was up to me, I for sure would have included diamonds and rubies in my collection of gemstones to build the most beautiful new kingdom, as would most people. On Earth, husbands adorn their brides with diamonds because we all consider them some of the most beautiful jewels on the planet. But God has known the properties of diamonds and other isotropic gemstones all along, and God was His new Jerusalem to be an extraordinary kingdom of light displayed through the only jewels that will magnify the light. This one thing alone proves that the Bible was inspired by God because nobody could have known this. No one knew about this until our generation. You can just imagine how beautiful the New Jerusalem is going to be. No need for do-it-yourself decoration there. No need for pictures or murals, no need. The materials that God uses will be far more than enough. Now what's even more fascinating is that the jewels listed in Revelation 21, written by John 2000 years ago, was not the first time we heard of these jewels. In order to find the original source of this particular collection of jewels, we need to go back 1,300 years before Christ, all the way back to the time of Moses. Back in Exodus 28, verse 17 through 21, God told Moses to write down the 12 gemstones that were to be on the breastplate of the high priest as he would minister in the tabernacle in the holy place. The 12 gemstone in Exodus 28 are the same gemstones in Revelation 21. Exodus was written about 3,300 years ago. God set it up in such a way that the 12 gemstones on the priest's breastplate would represent the 12 tribes of Israel, just as the 12 gemstone foundations of the New Jerusalem represent the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now inside the tabernacle of Moses, it was completely dark, except for the light of the lampstand, the menorah. Imagine how the light from the menorah would pass through the gemstones on the priest's breastplate. What a sight to behold! But that is just a small glimpse of what the New Jerusalem will be, as the entire foundation of the kingdom will be made of gemstones reflecting the light of the glory of God. It would be impossible for Moses to have known the difference between isotropic and anisotropic jewels 3,000 years ago. Moses was not shooting laser beams through gemstones under microscopes in his billion-dollar science laboratory to find out which ones were isotropic and which ones were anisotropic. Moses was simply dictating the instructions given to him by God. God and God alone knew since the beginning of time what science has only just discovered now. These 12 jewels, recorded in the scriptures thousands of years ago, prove that God was the author of the Bible and the creator of the world.